it's for adult audiences. So if there are any children in here, uh, please leave. <laughs> Start bumping uglies again, right? 
<laughs> so her index finger slowly makes its way down in the direction of my pubis. I'll suggest it. When suddenly she comes to an abrupt stop, just above the belly button, where the tip of her finger finds a speed bump, a pink strip of raised skin, a few inches above the belly button, a quarter inch thick, about three and a half inches long. Yes. Her finger stops at this sudden change in the geography of my skin. Tentatively, she traces a line along the length of it, and then even more hesitant, she explores the rest of my abdomen. She finds other pink speed bumps of different sizes and angles, some an inch, some three inches, some just thin wisps. What are these? And that's when time stops. And I feel the familiar sensation, sweat glands juicing up, a hardening between my legs, that low-grade migraine when I'm like an atom in a particle accelerator and the world around me slows, like it's moving through peanut butter. Come on, Nick, what are these? Nick. Nick. Do I tell her? <laughs> or do I let my comic book dexterity get me out of this one? In other words, do I tell her the truth, or do I do what I do so well? Make some shit up. The question, the choice, the question, the choice. What the are question, these? Choice. What are these? Nick, can you hear me? What are these? Do I tell the truth? Nick. Or do I make shit up? Nick. The low grade migraine, sweat glands juicing up, a hardening between my legs. First to Nick, do you copy? The low grade migraine, when I'm like an atom in a particle accelerator, and the world around me slows like it's moving through peanut butter. Nick! The question, the choice, the question, the choice. Launch me back in time to when I was 14. Now, this is the period of my life when I was living under a theory I like to call the universal theory of the gullibility threshold, or UTGT, or even better, GT for short. Now, the theory organizes the chaos of 21st century life into a simple, manageable model. Everyone has a gullibility threshold. Everyone, at some point, will come to recognize that the wheelbarrow of caca they're being fed is, in fact, a wheelbarrow of caca. <laughs> nothing more, nothing less. Now, the GT works on a scale from 1 to 10. At the bottom of the scale, you have your ones, the suckers, who won't even take a swallow of the caca. They know it's caca. They can smell it a hundred miles away, but their healthy skepticism becomes a cancer. They become conspiracy nut shut-ins thinking everything is cock The world's round. No, it's not. You're fucking with me. Sorry. That's just an illusion, man. <laughs> now, most people fall in the middle of the scale. The fours, fives, and sixes. They'll give the wheelbarrow of caca the benefit of the doubt, but then they'll get wise. Now, at the top of the scale, you have your tens. The suckers will gorge themselves on caca, repeat over and over. Yum, yum, tastes like chicken. Could I have seconds? Could I have thirds? And when the wheelbarrow's empty, they'll eat their own caca because they're addicted. The tens are those girls that collect unicorns and draw rainbows on their biology class notebooks. <laughs> They're the ones who have their day empty, walleted, because they believe every sob story they're told by every homeless person they meet on the street. Hey, you got a 20? I'm not like this. I don't do this ever. It's just my husband. He just got back from Iraq, and he's like all messed up in the head. He's at the VA hospital up in Sacramento, and he spent his last disability check on crack. I don't have any money to go up to Baker's to go to pick up our kids or staying with a grandmother who's dead and on dialysis and can't drive because the repo man got her car and they can't stay with her another night because her boyfriend is crazy and doesn't want the kids around the house no more. So I gotta go get them and then get my husband so we can find a place to live. If I, if you give me your number, I'll call you so I can pay your bill. Will you help me out? <laughs> Yes, the tens are rare, but they do exist. Adam fell into that category. I'm not gullible. Adam was a perfect ten. I am not gullible. Perfect ten. We 
which is odd. How, how do you account for a perfectly average 16-year-old from Southern California having a GT of 10? He could write him off, say he was just stupid. I'm not stupid. That would have been unscientific. To get to the bottom of the mystery of Adam's existence, you've got to start with the question. Now, how did you get to be so gullible? Did no one ever kick the scoop off your ice cream cone for no reason? Was your backyard a garden of Eden under the ever-present California sun? Did your parents actually stay married? Did your parents decimate nature with an overabundance of nurture? My parents? I don't know. They're all right, I guess. I mean, they're not like weird or anything. I don't hate them, they're just kind of there. Dad with his book, Mom with her puttering around. Me in my room doing homework or surfing the net. It's like we each have our own little areas of the house, and the dining room's like the one place where we, well, you know, eat. I guess that's what we do when we're together, eat. And then when we're all done, we all go back to our own little areas of the house until it's time to go to bed. Every day, it's pretty much the same. So that, like pretty much the rest of us, was a belief-starved kid, hopscotching across the 500 channels of satellite TV, and wandering the infinite pores of the World Wide Web, scavenging for that morsel of diversion that would sustain you until you found the next one. So that could have explained Adam, otherwise we'd all be fish hanging stupidly from home. <laughs> I'm not stupid, but he wasn't totally believed star. I recognize that being the first six words of Adam's online profile. I want to fall in love. I read that I was like, whoa! Who uses that word? Adam's like the first kid I ever met my age who used that word love without rolling his eyes and making it sound like the punchline of a really stupid joke. I want to fall in love with a girl, 15 to 18. I'd like her to have green eyes, dirty blonde hair. She should be like five, four, five, six times. Have a good body. No fat girls, please. No offense. She should be smart and likes to chill out on the beach. I'm 16, kind of tall. I used to play soccer, but trying to expand my horizons. You know me, I just want to chill with you at AOL.com. Now, when I read that, I was like, duh, who, who doesn't want a girl like that? I can imagine all the 15 to 18 year old, dirty, blonde, green eyed girls in the world reading that, breathing a sigh of relief, saying, Finally, finally there's someone out there who wants me. <laughs> <laughs>
the audience, having faced that darkness, that danger, can recognize the darkness and danger lurking in their own souls and actively take steps to change it. This is all well and good, but I couldn't recognize, rec reconcile all this darkness. darkness. And danger she was talking about with the fact that we spent the entire semester playing these stupid kids' games like Ted, Duck Duck Goose. Finally, one day in class, after she practically broke down in tears, telling us how important it was to recognize the darkness and danger, and that portraying that darkness and danger on the stage was one of nature's highest callings. I raised my hand. Yes, Nick. Um, Miss Spiegel. I think I understand what you mean with all the darkness and danger stuff, but what I'm having a hard time understanding is what does any of this have to do with playing Pussy Wants a Corner? <laughs> there are all sorts of repressed giggles and a little bit of awe, I might say. Other kids were not used to noticing me flying as far under the radar as I did in school. It took her a moment to uh, gather herself and improvise an answer to my question. Well... Games are, games are the essence of theater. When you play a game, you allow yourself to let go. You allow yourself to believe. Acting in a play is kind of like, well, kind of like playing a game, only instead of pretending you're a pussy cat, you're pretending to be Hamlet. Instead of trying to get to your corner in the circle, you're trying to decide whether or not to kill your stepfather. Oh. Well, and then she got on a roll. She started talking about other games that are really dangerous. That when I was in grad school like a million years ago. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> We had this one professor. He was this really intense guy who did all sorts of wild theater in New York back in the 60s. He would make us play these games, but the dangerous kind. He called these games dark play. Does anyone know what dark play is? Does anyone want to take a stab? Dark play is a kind of a game where certain players know the rules and others don't. In other words, some of the players are fully aware that they are participating in a game, while others are completely in the dark. Has anyone ever engaged in this kind of play? I raise my hand to take a step. Yes, Nick. Uh, Miss Miss Spiegel, is that like when you go online and you go into a chat room and you pretend you're someone else? Maybe. Could you unpack that for me? I'm totally 19th century when it comes to technology. I still have a hard time getting my toaster to work. Okay, well, we'll save you some girl and you're kind of... We should avoid making those kinds of judgments. Well, I'm just trying to make sure, so I'm sure I understand. Say you're some girl, and you look a certain way, so that no one wants to get with you. And you go online, and you meet a guy, and he says, what do you look like? You could tell him the truth. I'm overweight. I have bad acne. I have facial hair. I don't dress cool at all. Which will get you nowhere. Or you could be like, I'm 5'7". I've got dirty blonde hair, green eyes. I wear short mini skirts. Oh, yeah. We should totally get the guy interested. <laughs> right? Depends on the guy. But I think I see where you're going. But anyway, so, so the guy's like, You sound I want to get to know you. And you can be some fat thing, the gay kid who's just bored and wants to see where the whole thing's going to go, right? And then they end up cybering. Pardon? Cybering? Could, could you define that for me? That's when one of the jocks in the class chimed in. That's when you get all nasty with some chick online. Yeah! Oh, <laughs> I didn't know people did that. Uh, anyway, Miss Spiegel, is, is that what you mean by this dark play? I 
suppose I'm going to have to think about that more and get back to you. <laughs> but I figured that was right, and I, I sort of got the idea what she was trying to say about games and how theater was like a game, only more dangerous. But I've been to the school plays, they were about as dangerous as Pussy Wants a Corner. But this dark play thing, that was pretty cool. And if the school did a play like, like, that was like the internet with all the dark play happening there, check it out. But until they did that play, I'd get my dose of dark and dangerous in the one place in the world where a kid my age and of my demeanor could escape the cruel and unusual punishments assigned you by your peers. The World Wide Web, where you could be anything. You could enact revenge on all the shits that made your place a miserable life to inhabit. Now first, it was mostly small potato stuff. You, you, uh, you posed as some girl. <laughs> You, you lure some dickhead soccer player in a private jet, and you'd be all slutty. Say things like, I want to suck it. Put your mammoth cock in my mouth. <laughs> and and you get the guy and say all these sorts of stupid shit like, uh, lick it, lick it, bitch, lick it like an ice cream cone. <laughs> and you know, as you were spinning this fantasy, that some schmuck up in Adam, your Belinda, was, was upstairs in his room, uh, pants rolled down to his ankles, one hand hunting and pecking on the computer keyboard, the other deep in the jungle of his tiny whiteies. And, and just as he was getting to the point of no return, you, you pulled the Lucy Van Pelt to his Charlie Brown, pulling the football away just as he was about to kick it. Oh, my cock is so hard for you, I'm gonna blow! <laughs> and then there'd be the sights. And sometimes they split without saying another word. Soccer dude 2891 has left the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> other, other times they get all they, they get all pissed off, say shit like, uh, motherfucker, I'm gonna find out where you live and cut your fucking faggot dick off. <laughs> that, was, that was fun for about two and a half minutes. Uh, once you exhausted all the possibilities, and there were quite a few. It was the same old, same old. Which got me thinking about what Miss Spiegel said about going deeper, darker, more uh, dangerous. <laughs> Digging into the murky recesses of human nature, seeing what people were really made of. And that's when the fake ads started. I'm Kim. I'm an exchange student from Thailand. I'm 17 years old. My sister, Kim, is also an exchange student. We both go to Catholic High School here in California, United States. We both learn me as we're only starting to learn English and our host family are not very fun. We are looking for mature American men to show us the American way of life. He must have a car and maybe friend to join us on American adventure. My sister and I are looking for no experience. We are looking for someone who will, as you Americans say, rock our world. Or spun a picture of yourself to a Thai babe lonely at newsobeyahoo.com. <laughs> <laughs> Once you put one up, the rest were the same. Same disgustingly played people. 
sending the discussing and the praying responses, with, with accompanying discussing and the praying pictures. Confirmation that the world was made up of disgusting, depraved people, who for some reason believed that their beer guts and old lady dicks would attract a pair of nubile, underage, sex-hungry Asian chicks. Well, I was about to just pack it all in. That is, until I stumbled on Adam's profile and those six words. I want to fall in love. Ah, those words were so naked. Love? What the fuck is that? I want to fall in love with a girl, 15 to 18. Would like her to have green eyes, dirty blonde hair. She should be like 5'4", five, 5'6", five, tops. I have a good body. No fat girls, please. No offense. She should be smart and likes to chill out on the beach. I'm 16, kind of tall. I used to play soccer, but trying to expand my horizons. Email me at just want to chill with you at AOL.com. Uh, now, I, I couldn't just go up to him and I'd message him and be like, hey, I'm Nick. I'm, uh, I'm pretty confused about most stuff, so uh, what's up with the love shit? I might get him on the smart part, but you'd never mistake me for a five foot six inch, dirty blonde, green eyed girl. Who likes to chip? <laughs> no. Nature did not bless you with such gifts. But nature, with all its insurmountable obstacles, doesn't really exist anymore, does it? No. Not when we've got 512 megabytes of RAM, 650 megahertz of microprocessing power, and a high speed internet connection? No. Armed with that, there's no natural boundary that once crossed over can't be crossed back again. So in spite of all the shortcomings that nature cursed me with in the nature free world, I could be this girl of his dreams. I could invent Rachel. Now, the trick thing about inventing Rachel was unlike the horny Thai exchange student, Rachel had the, well, plausible, which you'd know is a tall order if you've ever had to invent a human being from scratch. <laughs> Now, first and foremost, she had to get the criteria. What do you look like? What do you think I look like? I don't know. Well, I have green eyes. Uh-huh. I have dirty blonde hair. Yeah. And I'm about five foot five. Do you like to chill? I love to chill. <laughs> Fitting the criteria was easy, because Adam pretty much sketched her out. Now it's just a matter of uh, flushing her out, so to speak. She had to be pretty. She couldn't be a total babe that was out of his league. Describe what you look like. I'll try, I guess. I mean, I'm not good at talking about myself. Try. Okay. People say I'm like a cross between Hilary Duff, but not so cutesy and annoying, and Avril Lavigne, but not so faux edgy, with a little bit of that important vibe. <laughs> yeah, I can totally see that. Cool. <laughs> oh. She needed to be smart, but she couldn't be so smart that Adam would feel like an oxymoron to her. Let's see. I got a B on my math midterm. Uh-huh. Uh, B plus in English. Huh. I'm stuck somewhere between a B and a B plus in history. Uh -huh. I totally hate French last semester. Oh. Chemistry totally sucks, and right now my average is a C. But I think I can still pull off a B. Cool. <laughs> you know, I wanted her to be uh, quirky in that certain way that makes all guys all smitten. But not so quirky that she didn't use a lot of She was like a freak. I used to play practical jokes on my ex-boyfriend one time. He was away on a band trip up in Sacramento. I convinced his mom to let me and my friend carry into his room. We filled his room up waist high with foam packing peanuts. I mean, you could have seen the look on his face when he got back. He opened his door and there was this tidal wave of packing peanuts. He tried to get me back with a practical joke of his own, but I broke up with him because he didn't really have a good sense of humor. Rachel also had to suggest the possibility of sex without coming off as a total hoe. I read somewhere that on average it lasts 11 minutes worldwide. <laughs> no shit. Think about it, 11 minutes? I mean, you might as well spend those 11 minutes writing the word alone over and over again on the wall. But to answer your question, no. I don't have a book. I mean, I'd like to have one. I'm not a whole hookup thing. I mean, I'm not against hooking up. In principle, it's just that got to be something more. In other words, for Rachel to be plausible, she had to be, well, kind of average. That first chat online, 
went surprisingly well. I discovered pretty quickly that with every response, Adam was creating Rachel just as much as I was. She could say something totally random, like... Uh, like, when is Ben Affleck not totally lame? And that would lead Adam to construct this whole matrix of assumptions about her, about like what she thought about like religion and Iraq and the last election. You know, which is what people talk about, right? I mean, you don't, you don't really know anything about anyone else, just surfaces, so you have to um, make shit up, you know, about what's going on underneath. Uh, the first chat online, uh, time went by so fast. I mean, we started chatting at 7 at night. Next thing I knew, it only seemed like maybe half an hour, I looked at the clock and said, 6.45 a.m. 11 hours and 45 minutes. He's nonstop. Kind of freaked me out, but it also kind of excited me that I didn't sustain Rachel for so long. But I remember that I had a math quiz that day, so Rachel wrote, I don't want to get off, but I've got a chemistry quiz tomorrow. Well, today, need to catch a few Z's, gotta get that C to a B. Yeah, that's cool. And I wondered, do I just leave it like that? Or do I keep the carrot dangling? Will you be online tomorrow night? Yeah, probably. We shall meet again. And with that, Rachel is Roses has left the chat room. We shall meet again. And meet again, they did. They exchange jokes. So these horny and pirates get ship prepped on an island, and it turns out that this island is home to a Catholic convent. <laughs> they exchange intimacies. You ever feel like, like you're the loneliest person on earth? They exchange pictures. Did you get the picture I emailed you? Yep. And? You're totally cute. <laughs> so Adam, cute isn't exactly a compliment for a girl. I mean, koalas are cute. <laughs> Sorry. Well, what do you want me to say? A girl shouldn't have to tell a guy what she wants to hear. So what, a guy has to feel like psychic? No, not psychic, just... Uh, imagine him. Imagine him. Okay, um... How's this? You are perfect. That's sweet, Adam. That's so sweet. I'm not perfect. I'm far from being perfect. I'm... You are. I'm just so afraid of disappointing you. Yes. I paved the way for the inevitable face-to-face -face that would prove if the virtual world connection could sustain the chaotic muck of the real world. And if their connection did survive, they could, uh, I don't know, uh, they exchange bodily fluids. I want to meet you. Now, the weird part. <laughs> in spite of the impossibility of a real world face-to-face -face between Rachel and Adam, something in me craved for it as much as he did. But I sensed Adam was on the verge of his gullibility threshold. Sometimes I get the feeling that... That what? Never mind. Well, if we're ever going to have a relationship, Adam, we need to be open with each other. I've been open with you. Yeah, until it's you have time to be like, hey, why don't we meet? I can't begin to tell you how much I want that. What's the problem then? I can't tell you that. Here you go again with all your mystery. Be patient, Adam. Please, pretty please, for my sake. Adam? It's just that I've never met anyone like you. And I've never felt...
love you right now. Turn on your webcam. Now when you do it, I need you to promise me that you'll tell him that you love him. Did you mean it? No, of course not. 
Well, then why'd you say it? I like seeing how far you can push people's reactions. That's weird. And there was a silence, and then Adam made the first move. It was, it was pretty funny, watching him try to play me. Yeah, I'm just hanging, waiting for this girl. After a while, I've been getting nowhere, I threw him a bump. Wow. Oh, that's wild, see? This, uh, this girl I'm waiting for, she lives in that neighborhood, too. What, what, what's the girl's name? Rachel. Rachel? Not, not Rachel Sutcliffe by any chance. No way, dude. Do you know her? Dude? Know her? She's my sister! <laughs> no fucking way! Once that was out in the open, the questions just poured in. Look, is she as, as cool a person as she is online? Dude, she's awesome! And is she as hot as she is in her picture? Dude, you're asking me and a brother if I think my sister's hot? That's, that's gross. I mean, come on, you know what I mean. Well, you know, let me, let me put it this way. If she wasn't my sister, I'd like to totally want to do her. <laughs> <laughs> That's sick, dude! Then came the plea for help. Look, she says she can't meet me because... Well, she says... It's complicated. Dude, sorry to say it is. Why? I, I can't, can't explain that to you right now. now. And that's what she always says. You know, even with all the complications, I might be able to help you out. Really? Sure, dude! As they say, your wish is my command. Now when you do it, I need you to promise me that you'll tell him that you love him. The question, the choice. The question. The choice. What are these? What are these? Nick, can you hear me? What are these? Do I tell the truth? Nick. Or do I make shit up? Nick. That low grade migraine, sweat glands juicing up a hard new between my legs. First to Nick, do you copy? Me speeding up. What are these? The air taking on the consistency of peanut butter. Nick! The question, the choice, the question, the choice. Adam. He became as addicted to me as he was to Rachel. I became his corrupt psychiatrist. Instead of curing him of his fixation, I deepened it. Until I could make my next move. Friday night. And Rachel will be there. Dude, I promise you. The thing is, though, you gotta make sure you don't mention it to her, because she finds out she'll go ballistic. Why? Rachel has a reason. Which my friend are sometimes a complete mystery to me. I'll think about it. Huh. I didn't think about what I'd do if I did. I managed to lure Adam over to my house in the sleepover. I just figured I'd play it by ear. So that's the difference between, between uh, the pros and the amateurs in this kind of game. Amateurs don't leave any room for uncertainty or, or improvisation. They try to lock in their strategy before they even play, start to play the game, not taking into account the infinite contingencies that might come into play, wishfully thinking that the future of the world is within their control. But the pro, on the other hand, knows that locking in too early is a recipe for disaster. You see, when you lock in too early, you cut off all possibility of, of improvisation. Staying in the moment, taking that wide left turn so, to, so you keep your mark off balance. And yeah, this, this method of playing is riskier. Chances of making a fatal mistake are exponentially greater. And that's why I'm a pro and everyone else are amateurs. I came over that Friday night after he met my mom. Oh, all right, that was really fucking awkward. We went downstairs to my bad dream. So, where's Rachel, Nick? I made my face go all serious and crazy. I said, uh, I said, father has it. What do you mean he has it? It's a long story. Well, is she gonna come back? Well, it's, it's hard to say. When my stepfather has it, is, uh, <clears throat> There's no telling when she'll be back. Well, maybe I should go. No, no, no. I mean, yeah, you can go if you want. But, like, uh, my mom will ask all sorts of questions, and um, if you stick around, maybe Rachel will come back. And there was this weird silence, and I didn't know what to do. I mean, I got him here to my house, to my room. Which is what I wanted, I guess, and I just stood there like fucking retard. <laughs> it 
if I had a gun in that moment, <laughs> I would have stuck it in my mouth and pulled the trigger. But I didn't say anything. Well, your mom's pretty cool. Oh, no, she's not. I think she's cool. Well, that's because she was hitting on me. <laughs> she was not. <laughs> Coming here is like the first time she's been around a man and... What about your stepdad? Uh, my stepdad's got plenty of other places to dunk his, you know, what? Uh, uh, she was hitting him. Dude, what are you, blind or something? Your mom is pretty hot. Dude! That's my mom you're talking about! <laughs> Yesterday, but I'm 15 today. Oh. Happy birthday, dude. <laughs> Thanks. Wait, did you ever ask your mom about this? Oh, no fucking way! Why not? Don't you want to know? Uh, of course I want to know. I don't go a single day where I don't pause and turn in my bed wondering who's my real dad. See, until I found this, my mother, that psycho upstairs, led me to believe that her first husband was my father. When he shot himself. He shot himself? Yeah, when I was 11. He disappeared one night, and then cops found him the next day in his parking lot in his car in front of a Jewel Osco, sucking on the wrong end of a rifle barrel. Holy shit! Yeah. Oh, wait, what's a Jewel Osco? Oh, it's a supermarket chain back in <laughs> Chicago. They don't have them here. Silence hung in the room. Silence filled with awe, mystery. Adam looked beautiful. But what about Rachel? Who's her? Uh, uh, <laughs> who's, who's Rachel's dad? <laughs> that, that asshole was so obsessed by that little bitch. He couldn't see me in the moment. Rachel was more real than me. Me, you know, the person who invented Rachel, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, I wish I could describe the rage inside me at that moment. I wanted to rip out his heart and stick it down his throat. I wanted to, you know, laugh in his face, be like, you fucking fool, you, you fucking twist. I am Rachel, you piece of shit. Me. You're sitting right next to her. Oh, do you, do you want to meet me now? Do you, do you want to fall in love with me now? Are you dying to stick your cock in me now? You jerk off for her every night? Are you going to jerk off for me? 
I'll more myself. Sounds totally clear to me. 
think I love her, which is weird because you haven't met her. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you'll like her as much when you meet her? So you're walking? Yeah. I'm just talking, you know? And the sun's coming down, so I'm just like, still looking at the ocean. Weird, this shit's getting in my head. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> okay, so ocean, sky, seagull. Yeah, and, and we're just sitting there. What does it feel like? Really nice. Yeah, just like we were holding it. Neither one of us knowing who made the first move. We kiss. Like this? Totally wasted. Me too. that you'll tell him that you love him. Ah, the question, the choice, the question, the choice. What are these? What are these? Nick, can you hear me? What are these? You want to tell the truth? Nick? They're going to make shit up. Nick! I'm going to break my green sweat glands juicing up a hardening between my legs. Nick, do you copy? He's speeding up. on the consistency of peanut butter. Nick! Now, I mentioned before what separates the pros from the amateurs is the capacity to improvise in a game. Now, I would be lying to you if I told you that I planned what happened last night. I guess I wanted it to happen, but wanting something and that thing actually happening are two very different things. That night ended a little one-sided. <laughs> Turns out, I did most of the giving. I remember feeling on the one hand how, well, how God must feel. At the same time, having Adam in my mouth, hearing him say, Rachel, oh, oh, Rachel. You can imagine how that felt. <laughs> I wish there was a petal of a gun in my mouth instead of Adam. When we were done, Adam puked, he passed out, and when I woke up, 
He was already gone. Nikki! Hi? What? Could you come down here a sec? What? You slept late. I had stuff to do, Mom. You look a little. Oh, it's a lucky guy in there. Nick. It's an awful lot of eyeshadow. Nick. Mind. You might still convince him you're still 25. Ha ha. I liked your friend. Aaron, was it? You liked him? But you can't remember his name. I'm sorry, Nicky. I'm just. Where did you two meet? Around. Just around? What about around don't you understand? Well, could you be more specific? Well, what's with this interrogation? I'm not interrogating. What's next? Are you going to attach electrodes to my nipples? Throw a hood over my head and maybe take some souvenir photographs? Nikki. I told you I met him around. What else do you want me to say? You meet all sorts of people in all sorts of places. How am I supposed to remember shit like that? Language! Stuff like that! Well, it's not exactly as if you have braids of friends walking through that door. Never. Adam is the first friend you brought into this house since we moved here. I don't think it's unreasonable to ask a simple question about where you met him. And I told you I met him around, okay? What else do you want me to say? Can I go now? What's happening to you? Jesus! You didn't used to be this way. You used to talk to me. Go ahead, Nick. Leave. But before you leave, let me make something clear. Until you're willing to tell me where you met that boy. Until you're willing to tell me where you met that boy, you are not allowed to bring him into this house again. Have I made myself clear? Clear as mud, Mom. Who are you? And you don't have to worry about him coming over anymore, not after the way you acted. Excuse me? No. I know you're a lonely old hag, but did you have to hit on him? What did you say? I mean, I know you like him young, but that was a little risky. Oh my god, oh sweetie, 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 I didn't mean that. Baby, baby, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're okay, you're okay. You're okay. It's okay. <laughs> Whatever. Please don't go. I'll do anything. 
Are you sure? Never been more sure of anything in my life. Okay. Will you do something for me? I want to watch. <clears throat> Turning my webcam on. Of course, this was a day that Rachel couldn't make. Could you imagine me standing? squeezed into a miniskirt and a tank top. Hi, Adam, it's me, Rachel. <laughs> I've gotten the shit kicked out of me before. It's not fun. No, I will admit it's totally fucked, I know, but there was a certain amount of pleasure in, in pretending Adam inflicted on me. Better than total silence, right? I realized in this utter state of uselessness that if I wanted to keep Adam, I had to do the unthinkable. Capiche 911 has entered the chat room. Just want to chill with you. You're Adam, right? Yeah. Nice to meet you, Adam. Who are you? Adam Moody, right? Who the fuck are you? I want your language if I were you, Adam. We don't like it when people use the F word to me. Oh, yeah? There's this one kid, God bless him, used that word to me one too many times. You know what happened to him? What? Cops found him one night, hanging from a tree. You want to know how he was hanging from that tree? Um, a rope? Railroad spikes. That's right, some sick fuck crucified him with railroad spikes to a tree. Sick, don't you think? Yeah, even sicker. He was missing parts. Like what parts? Use your imagination. Can you use your imagination? Or do I need to help you out, Adam Moody of 1211 Camino del Sur? Who are you? That's a good question, Adam. But I think a better question is who the fuck are you? It seems we've got a little problem here, Adam. It seems you've been wanting to stick your toothpick dick in places where your toothpick dick don't belong! I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. Very really funny. Adam Moody of 1211 Camino del Sur. I'll put it even simpler. Stay the fuck away from Rachel. Wait, you know Rachel? Yeah, I know Rachel. And I know what you're trying to do to her. I'm not doing anything. You're filthy. Shit! I'm not doing anything. I gotta come over there right now! Take that webcam of yours and shove it right up your ass! You little prick. Don't think I don't know what you're trying to do. Don't think I don't know what you do in that front of that webcam every night. I've seen it, and it's disgusting. You're fucking sick, you know that? Doing that in front of a 15-year-old girl? What's the matter with you? It wasn't my idea. <sighs> you spineless piece of shit. You know what I am? I have a mind to send someone over there right now so to slowly cut your balls off in front of that webcam of yours. I would love to watch that. I would sit there drinking my fucking bottle of Yoo-Hoo, watch you scream like a little bitch. Please, please don't cut my balls off. <laughs> Scared now? Consider this little conversation warning. Stay the fuck away from my stepdaughter. Wait. Wait, she, she's your stepdaughter? Really scared now, aren't you? I'll say it again. Slowly this time, so you'll get the message nice and clear. Stay the fuck away from my stepdaughter. Because man to man, 
Adam Moody, 1211 Camino del Sur. Only one of us can have her. And that one of us is not you. You dig? Capiche 911 has left the chat room. He said he was going to crucify me to a tree using railroad spikes. Such a bastard. Okay. He, he said something. What did he say? He said, only one of us can have her, and that one of us is not you. <gasps> I'm so ashamed. This is awful. Exactly. What did he mean? I'll tell you everything when I see you on Friday. I don't know if Friday is such a good idea. Fuck him, I'm meeting you. I'm tired of being a slave. You go fuck himself. Rachel, be careful. I'm tired of being careful. See you Friday. We'll be separate me. Now when you do it, I need you to promise me that you'll tell him that you love him. The question, the choice, the question, the choice. What are these? What are these? Nick, can you hear me? What are these? Do I tell the truth? Nick. Or do I make shit up? Nick. The low grade migraine, sweat glands juicing up, a hardening between my legs. The Nick, do you copy? You see how what are these? There's a on the consistency of peanut butter. Nick. Question, the choice, the question, the choice. I waited on the pier out of sight from the carousel so Adam wouldn't see me. Let me show you. So, he dressed the part. He had a book he had roses under his hand. I watched him for a bit. Everything moved so slow, except for us. Except for him, except for me. And then we moved like, we lived in a world made of peanut butter. What the fuck are you doing here? Yeah, you sick little faggot, I should kick your ass! Adam, I swear to God, you, I wouldn't have come here if it wasn't for two seconds. Rachel's missing. Bullshit! No, I swear to you on my life! Our stepfather, he took her. What do you mean he took her? Uh, he found out that she had a date to meet you. He went ballistic. He beat the shit out of my mom. He smashed up Rachel's room, her computer. Uh, then she ran to my room, uh, scared, and she was scared, crying, and then she made me come here and tell you what happened. My then my stepfather, he came into the room and pulled her by her hair and took her out of the house. I don't believe you. What the fuck are you doing? Look, does this look like I'm lying? Holy shit, what the fuck is that? He put a cigar out on my shoulder! Man, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah? Well, fuck you! I'm sorry, man. Don't cry. I don't know where you took her. I'm so fucking scared, Adam. Come on, I'll take you back to your house. No! I can't go there. Anything, I'll sleep on the beach. Anything but there. Take you back to my place. As we walked away, Adam took the roses he'd gotten for Rachel and tossed them in the dumpster. Adam didn't have any absolute mandarin in his house. We didn't need it. I cried the whole time. So raw. But this time, when I had Adam in my mouth, he didn't say, Rachel. Fuck Rachel. <sighs> he said my name. When we were done, I passed out on his bed. 
know what time it was, but the words... You've got mail. <laughs> Coming from his computer woke me. Eyes half open, I, I watched the light from his computer monitor, outlining the muscles in his arms. The shoulders started to shake. Like he was hyperventilating. You sick fuck. I told you to stay away from me. Adam will be 12, 11 Camino Bill, sir. But since you didn't listen, take a good, long, hard look at this picture. You did this. Uh, the picture? It was a picture of a girl, about five foot six. <clears throat> at the side of the freeway. The eyes were all bruised, her clothes torn. A few feet away from her body, her head. <laughs> she could have had dirty blonde hair, but you couldn't tell because it was all covered in blood. And she didn't have much of a face left. I got the picture online off this website where you can download crime scene photos. Now when you do it, I need you to promise me that you'll tell him that you love him. Uh, after, after I left Adam's house, I stayed out all night. I had reached my own gullibility threshold. And it broke my heart to see that I was a 10. <laughs> I believed everything! I wonder what Miss Spiegel would have thought about my dark play. <laughs> the best theater takes the audience on a journey into the darkest, most dangerous regions of the human soul. Was my dark play dark enough? Dangerous enough? And at the end of the journey, the audience, having faced that darkness, that danger, can recognize the darkness and danger lurking in their own souls and actively take steps to change it. I sure as hell recognize the darkness and danger in my soul. I couldn't do shit to change it. There was only one thing left for me to do. Heinous Buster's SCU has entered the chat room. Adam. Adam Moody. Who are you? My name is Olivia Stabler. I work with the Special Victims Unit of the New York City Police Department. Right. In the criminal justice system, sexually based offenses are considered especially heinous. In New York City, the dedicated detectives who investigate these vicious felonies are members of an elite squad known as the Special Victims Unit. Whatever. I am a member of this elite squad, and I have been sent here to Southern California to investigate a string of especially brutal sex murders that have taken place in this area. Far too complex and heinous for local law enforcement, given our expertise in solving heinous cases. I'm here to nail the heinous bastards that have been committing these heinous crimes. Yeah, what do you want with me? Rachel. Adam, sweetie, I need to ask you a favor. 
I don't care how you write when you're chatting with people your own age, but when you chat with me, chat like an adult. What are you trying to say? I detest teen talk. You and R are letters. If you mean you are, spell it out. Y-O-U-A-R-E. Same with two. That's a number, not a preposition. Oh. How old are you, Adam? 16, going on 17. You're almost a man. I guess. You guess? Adam, either you're almost a man or you aren't. Which is it? I'm almost a man. Good. So write like one. You knew Rachel Sutcliffe. Adam, I'm asking a simple yes or no question. Did you know Rachel Sutcliffe? No. I see. What about her brother, Nick? <clears throat> Nick Sutcliffe? No, I don't know anyone named Nick. <clears throat> okay. I can understand your need to deny that you know him, to deny that you knew her, to deny all of the things that, well, things that if I were in your shoes, I might deny too. Fuck off! Language, Adam. How do you think that poor decapitated girl feels knowing you're denying knowing her? How can you live with yourself knowing you did that? Now I ask you again. Did you know Rachel Sutcliffe? Yes. How well did you know Rachel? Look, I don't want you to think I'm like a total freak for saying this. Adam, what did I say before about teen language? That you don't like it? That's right. And what was wrong with that sentence? B which sentence? Scroll up. The one that reads, don't think I'm like a freak for saying this. like anything. You either are or you aren't a freak. Right. So what is it you want to tell me about Rachel that makes you afraid I'll look at you as a freak? I, I loved her. I thought so. And that's why I sought you out. We need your help. At that point, to convince Adam, Olivia wheeled in a Titanic-sized wheelbarrow caca. <laughs> I don't even remember what she said, some bullshit about some criminal conspiracy surrounding Rachel's father, illegal drug trafficking, coyotes smuggling illegal aliens across the U.S. Mexican border, <laughs> child pornography, internet snuff movies, Al-Qaeda sleeper cells. <laughs> Al-Qaeda sleeper cells. The details aren't what's important. What's important is that she told Adam if he followed the money, and yes, she actually said that, follow the money, <laughs> that the trail would lead to Nick. Right now, as we sit here chit-chatting, they are out there perpetrating the rape of Southern California. Adam, the syndicate has used Nick to procure its victims from the World Wide Web. Teenagers just like you, under age. Some of them even younger. You drink milk, don't you? <laughs> yeah. You've seen those faces of those kids on the back of the carton. <laughs> what do you think happened to them? Nick? had every intention of turning you from a normal, well-adjusted, middle-class young man into one of those faces staring you down while you eat your cat and crunch. <laughs> I, I don't believe you. You're one lucky teenager. That could have been your head lying in a ditch at the side of the freeway. I'm not gullible. I'm not stupid. That could have been you, Adam, had it not been for Rachel getting in the way. I am not gullible. I'm not stupid. Nick was a victim here 
too. But Nick stopped being a victim the day he had his sister murdered. Depravity begets depravity, and now Nick is beyond depraved. He is an inhuman monster. He needs to be put down. We need you to eliminate him. Wait. You're trying to set you up to kill him? Kill is <laughs> such an ugly word, <laughs> Criminals kill? Law enforcement solves crimes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, uh, hypothetically. Well, that's a good word, Adam. I'm impressed. Hypothetically. If all this were real, and hypothetically, if I were to go along with what you're asking, What do I do? Make contact with him. Meet him in a public place, the mall. When he shows, tell him you have to run an errand for your mother. Take him to the Williams Sonoma on the second level. Buy a knife. We'll reimburse you, don't worry. <laughs> what kind of knife? A big knife. Like a butcher knife? Exactly. Take them to where they keep the dumpsters out back behind the Sears. Get them up against the wall and start stabbing him. Hypothetically. Oh, God. I know it's a heavy burden. But think of the burden Nick will be to us all if he's allowed to live. Think of the favor you'll be doing Southern California. What about me? What's in it for me? The rewards for you, Adam, will be great. What kind of rewards? Use your imagination. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. Use your imagination. And after all that he's put you through, is it the part of you that wants to kill him? Will you do it? Yes. Good. One more thing. Now when you do it, I need you to promise me that you'll tell him that you love him. What? You do you love, love him, him, don't you? Don't you? different when we met at the food court of the mall he looked older like uh well like a man it's hard to look him in the eye hey hey everything all right yeah you i'm fine look uh, i need to run an errand for my mother i need to find a way to so. We walked in silence. Adam did everything. Olivia instructed him to do with, with calm, with grace, with dignity. Come on, uh, let's get out of here. Find some more, some place more quiet to, to talk. So we left the mall and went to the back area of Sears where they keep the dumpsters.
Mount St. Helen blowing your top, a cloud burst from a shower of wine, a swirl of color disappearing outlines, the sky splitting open and swallowing me, the earth cracking open and levitating me, a gazillion tiny light bulbs twinkling through the pores of my skin, the Virgin Mary and Mary Magdalene caressing, kissing, licking my flesh, a skyscraper collapsing, a mother giving birth, no, me! I love you! No, me! I love you! Fire. Water. Light. Air. Fight. I love you. sat there in the silence. It was starting to get light outside. And what she said. Nick, you are totally full of shit. Why do you always have to make shit up? And she went to sleep. <laughs> I go to college now. Um, I work nights at the campus library. I still live in the dorms, but I'm hoping to save enough money over, you know, this quarter and over the summer so that I can get my own place. <laughs> I guess you can say I have a girlfriend. That's her lying naked on the bed. Things are pretty much normal now. I mean, there's, uh, there's still a lot of shit I need to figure out, but uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm pretty much indistinguishable from any other college kid. Still undecided about my major. <laughs> 